um, this is kind of unusual. You're doing an event in January, Robert, and this yes. is you don't usually do these kind of things in January. How do you? I mean, I don't remember you doing events in January. Well, I don't know. We we did. Uh, well, actually, let's see. I'm trying to uh, think. Uh, last year, we did something in January. I can't remember what. Maybe it may not have been on Maui, but we did something in January. Anyway. Um, yeah, but it's, it, it's um, of course it's a good time of year in terms of the visitors here, and, and uh, we haven't done something for a while here on Maui. We've been active other places. You've gone, d- gone to other islands and done things? We've been, we go to other islands, and the most recently we were in California, actually, with a couple of ev- events. I remember I had talking heard it. To, to you about I don't that. remember that. Yeah. Well, how nice was that? Well, that was fine. That was um, participation in uh, something called the Festival for New American Music in, at the California State University of Sacramento. Mm. That was their 40th annual. Wow, it's so it's a major it's big. festival for one ten days. Did you play? Yeah, so I participated in, in a couple of things to, during that event. And then we also did, uh, in cooperation with our uh, friend and a longtime colleague Sarn Oliver, the violinist from San Francisco Symphony, we put together a concert in Berkeley at the Berkeley Hillside Club. Nice. So it was a co-production that uh, involved all the, beyond some piano performance, something of Sarn's, a uh, rather celebrated piece by George Crum called the Black Angels Quartet. Ooh. So Sarn was able to corral his colleagues who had just performed it the week before uh, to a string quartet from the members of the symphony to uh, also perform it at our event. And Did you have people who who knew you and knew about you that were there? Was this we all new? Pre- we had a pretty good day. Berkeley Hillside Club. is very unusual, lovely kind of facility. So pretty good turnout, you know. Well, yeah, good. That was, yeah, that was good. Well, you know, so I'm, then, I'm glad you're expanding. It's always amazing to see what you do. Yeah. This new event is coming yeah. up January 6th. And it's going to be, I love these events. Actually, I have to say these events are my favorite events. Mm-hmm. When you do the art and interactive media, mm-hmm. those are my favorite events. And we haven't done them for a while uh, in, for a couple of reasons. <clears throat> One being that uh, they used to be uh, at the Seabury Hall mm-hmm. old performing arts studio, right. which w- was a beautiful black box theater, mm-hmm. that very, very... Uh, well appointed, you know, lots of fixtures, and of course there was the director of the theater there, uh, Todd Van Amberg, who always mm-hmm. assisted. So we did a usually annually we did a, a an event there, and then of course that facility closed down, mm-hmm. was replaced by the uh, current Creative Arts Center, um, <clears throat> which is not a black box theater; it's more mm-hmm. like a regular theater. And we've had concerts there, but um, we didn't. Uh, Really have a place until locating this Pro Arts Playhouse. I've heard you know, a lot of good things about that. Yeah, a, That's in Kihei, right? Right. Where is so it in Kihei? It's, it's, 12, it's 1280 South Kihei Road, so mm-hmm. it's in the Ezeka, Ezeka mm-hmm. um, um, area of mm-hmm. the um, a, a mall, I guess you'd say. Right. It, it, it's sort of out of the way a little bit, but it's, um, those of you familiar out there, it's. Um, Close to the Vietnamese restaurant, mm-hmm. uh, which would be um, on the Malka side, and and um, so it's a it's a not a large facility, but it has a potential. It has these it does a lot of theater, and with the little work we could have actually make it a black box, but we probably won't go to those lengths. But it's it's quite, it's somewhat intimate, but it also is very conducive to the sort of work and we and and that's why I say that Christy Scott has been uh, extremely cooperative and to to date and it's our first event there mm-hmm. so and we don't and it's rather uh, adventuresome it's an adventuresome <laughs> event yeah and it it it's not our normal venues of are course if you have it, Tom Vendetti <laughs> it, 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 the it, word it, adventure is his middle name yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. and it's not not a, a we we do some in Kiei but mostly you know upcountry and uh, central Maui, but uh, so it's not the you know, again the most f- familiar area for us. So we're hoping that uh, people will come out, and, and, and of course it's a free event, and um, 
I just it love features, that you do features, these events for free. And, and we've been so fortunate to bring um, here today and have uh, cooperation from Tom Vendetti, mm -hmm. uh, not only a PhD psychologist, but an Emmy Award winning filmmaker. And he's contributing his resources, the, the okay. screen and the projector, very, Good. very unusual projector that can transition, as I understand, between 3D and 2D. Right. Uh, I was, uh, got word that there was this modular that literally goes in front of one projector and will uh, convert that image to 3D. So I don't need to bring two projectors, one for each wow. eye. And it's, it's again, the, the technology is fascinating. Is but it software? It, well, it's similar to, uh, there's two different types of 3D. One is called passive, and that's what you use when you go into the theater and wear the polarized glasses. The, uh, the other is called active shutter, and it literally shutters the image back and forth where you can't visually see it, but it's tricking your brain into one solid image. And this little modulator is using the active, uh, you know, technology to make that happen. Have yeah, fun. And uh, and it's also very uh, easy to carry around. You know, I w recently took it to San Francisco and screened my new film, and uh, you know, was, was able. Was that the thing down in um, south of San Francisco? At Half Moon Bay. Yes. At Half Moon Bay, how right. was that? Oh, that was excellent. It was. Uh, when was that? Just a week ago. About uh, two and a half weeks ago. Yeah. And that was with um, you and... Kayla Beamer and oh, Moana wow. and, and wow. Nancy, and we uh, offered it to the Buddhist Film Foundation, who picked it up, by the way. So they Wonderful. make it some theatrical releases, and, uh, and, and they also have a film festival that literally goes around the world, so we're very excited about that. What a great way to expand who you're getting to watch your great films. Right, right. That's beautiful. And this uh, on, and so this event we're talking about is January. 6th, is that a Saturday? Saturday, mm -hmm. Saturday at seven thirty, mm -hmm. and uh, Tom will have a new film. Is it pretty much a new? A yeah, new it'll be the never screened before. Right. Yeah, um, and it's based on exotic Cambodia, so it's all of these uh, images of the ancient temples there. Because we, there's this shadow theme that you've come yes. up with. And, and there's all these beautiful light and shadows and the, and the temples and so forth. So we're going to go on this little visual 3D ride with music. Is it Lou Harrison? Lou Harrison, yeah. Yeah, who, uh, fascinating music. I mean, yeah. he, we could spend a whole hour talking about him. <laughs> we, we've done that. And yeah. actually, when we celebrated his centennial, he would have turned 100 earlier I this remember. year. I remember. It was we, fascinating. We had... Uh, Sarah Cahill plays music. Is that how you kind of knew about it through, through Yes, Robert? yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And when I heard that, I instantly thought of Cambodia. Mm -hmm. and, and the images fit so well with it. So, And then I'm also working with uh, Dr. Gary Greenberg. And he's going to take us on this 3D journey into flowers. And, wow. And uh, it's, again, uh, we're just starting to finish finishing that. So what is he going to have for his music behind that? That's some um, of Kayla Beamer's music. Oh, good. Yeah. Good, good, yeah. good. Yeah. So. And so, and, and then there will be a third film by our uh, technical producer and also a visual and uh, artist and composer Peter Swansea called Awakenings, that apparently is uh, in, in 3D as well. Right. Oh, yeah. In fact, we'll be working on that this coming Saturday, putting okay. it together. Finishing. He yeah, has it yeah. done. I, no, I know. He's, well, it's interesting. It needs to be converted to 3D on a Blu-ray. Huh. So I have the yeah. technology to do that so we can actually have a, a way to screen it. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So three D, some three D film. You know, this is this is exciting. So give me the, 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 the breakdown yeah. of what comes first, who's on first, and what goes second in, in the lineup. Okay. It's it. There's a there's going to be a lot, and as I say, we've reached out as we usually do. I refer to it as, as Edmund Flo Arts Multimedia Group when we first started. It was a little bit inspired by what I learned happened in Japan with the great Japanese composer Toro Takamitsu, who established a multimedia group. I forgot its exact name, but basically gathered not only musicians, but visual artists and uh, performance artists and filmmakers. And um, w We did one th little thing that uh, they developed uh, quite a few years ago called Corona, um, and it also involves a lot of chance operations. But anyway, we so here on Maui, you know, there's just a wealth of uh, individuals, artists, that um, poets and 
uh, painters and uh, musicians. So and some you know, I know, and some are new to me. And, yeah, um, well, I, I I absolutely was, I always liked um, the artwork of Tony Walham. Yeah, Tony Walham has um, mainly worked on a, a script for uh, based on Plato's. Uh, allegory of the cave and that's where our shadow theme comes hmm. back again because it's a maybe you've encountered it I mean it's a lot on the high school syllabuses and you know, over the years but a, a, it's a deep you know sort of um, tract but basically involves people who have been chained uh, for, since childhood to look at straight ahead and can't look anywhere else and mm. behind them is a fire that yields light and in front of the fire passes the actual people but they only see the shadows all over so it it gets it's very to, psychological it's it's it's, <laughs> it's you, you would know you would know all no, about it, that it's right, all Tom? about really in some ways very much about tom's uh, previous film that we we're so fortunate to uh, co-produce the the Tibetan illusion destroyer. Mm-hmm. It's what mm-hmm. you know. What is reality? Is mm-hmm. it for the, for these little these people? It was shadow, and then there becomes the moment when they are freed, and can look around, and they encounter quote unquote reality. But is he doing artwork to this? Uh, n- no. It okay. will be mostly, it's, it's just his interpretation, and he may play a role in it uh-huh. because we may have a, a character, Plato, actually. You're uh, bringing Plato back. I think so. <laughs> How cool. But he may come back you incarnated. Do you should do Plato. Reincarnated as Haile Selassie. <laughs> oh my God! No, I see it. I, 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 I see it. I don't see that. But what is reality? <laughs> <laughs> what a concept! Reality, what a concept! But it's, at, at least a somewhat dictatorial type. And I know we, we don't associate Plato with with sort of right wing extremism. No, but, we don't. But some have over the years, and uh-huh. he was. If you read through this particular book, uh-huh. he was very much pro war that the development of a human being ultimately f- f- is f- to become a great warrior. And, of course, we're talking oh. about warring Athens and Sparta at the time. Mm-hmm. So, the, but, And one of the things we're going to bring up is that things haven't changed very much, you mm-hmm. know, and that's why we may be able to bring him back. But uh, there's the other side of it, the when Socratic... When you bring him back, you're talking about him being Plato? Yeah, br- oh. bring Plato back as a, some sort of... 20th century figure maybe but anyway um, bring him back that's, the, that's <laughs> for discussion tomorrow <laughs> uh, but you know um, it, the, the whole the, uh, question of what's reality and whether these people who s- finally can see the sun lit um, objects and people accept it as such and they tend, in the allegory, they tend to go back to the comfort of the shadow mm-hmm. as the reality. So it's just layers of what is actually reality and and, and also illusion uh, about reality. So, well, you have some and, wonderful musicians. And so we have our musicians this. have been with us since we started, really. Yeah, uh, some of the best. Danny M., Mm-hmm. The bass, Paul Marchetti, percussion, awesome guy, and uh, John John Zangrando on on alto sax and flute, and then we have of course Tony with the libretto and possibly some on stage performance. Lisa Buell, don't know her. Is it, um, used to be Lisa Ganyan until she married, but she's been again with us since the beginning of our productions, and she's become an expert in shadow work. Mm. So this is particularly appropriate for her to. She's a, a performance artist, dancer, and um, then we have Francis Kane, Frank Kane, who's a professional actor. He has a varied background, including participation with um, the uh, Muppets and huh. uh, in Sesame Street. And huh. is um, he local? Yeah, he lives here. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has a, he's multi-talented. You know, he's a visual artist. He's kind of a sculptor, jeweler. Um, he is an expert in set designs. 
Hmm. He, every year until a few years ago, uh, would go back with the Joffrey Ballet and do oh. Nutcracker, where he had designed the Mother Superior. That's huge puppet, you might say, more greater than life size that he oh. operated every year. Um, and he was with Mummenschanz and uh, has degrees in children's education. So the, it's, he's, he's a wonderful, uh, wonderful person to have yeah. around to just guide us through the um, ins and outs of theater production. And so, so does that happen Prince first, and then Tom's films later? How it's the lineup? So okay, so what we have are uh, they're going to be a number of small, uh, shorter numbers mm -hmm. that are going on for the entire evening. So including poetry readings, Frank will be the narrator throughout, and he will recite some poems uh, throughout. The poems of, of uh, well, uh, we we don't have the rights yet, so I won't okay. announce. But uh, one he will though is a, an ancient Korean poem entitled oh. "In the Night." Uh, which talks a lot about shadow work. And um, <clears throat> then we will have a, uh, with the Korean connection, um, a work that was composed by a woman in Korea, Shin Hee Park. She now is the director of Veritas Music High, Contemporary Music Foundation in Seoul. Mm. And now I've been in touch with that foundation for over 30 years, wow. and we've had a lot of ex exchange where we take Korean work and perform it here as we're doing, and they take our music and perform it over there, and that's been ongoing. And this is the thread of it still. In this case, the, I've performed this piece in California, actually, six short pieces called Abstract Paintings, number one. So it, of course, suggests com combining with visuals. Now, she doesn't have any specific paintings in mind, so we're going to use works by Martha Woodbury, one of and our Martha, gifted yeah. visual artists here, yep. and Linda Whittemore. Also and another. are they doing work on site? Or are they no, th this will be, in other words, they're, we're screenings. matching them up. Okay. And so it will be just the actually playback of a piano performance because there's no actual acoustic piano in the facility there, uh -huh. but a playback of a, of a performance and then the matching with still images of abstract work by these two great artists. So that will, that will start it. And then there's a, something we call triple play on words, which it maybe it's too, too much to describe. I don't want to give too much I'll away. Go because, for it. Go but, ahead. You know, <laughs> we can take but, it. But uh, it's, again, we bring into the production, for example, the work of Richard Nelson, mm -hmm. the Trihue watercolorist who was a student of Joseph Albers, the great c colorist. And, um, and we, it's something I've thought about for quite a while, but it, it has to do with homophones, you know, these, um, like whales, you know, mm -hmm. beluga whales, W-A-I-L-S and W-H-A-L-E-S, and how <clears throat> those kinds of pairings can kind of lose their meaning uh, if we if we just say them continuously. And there's an, an analogy in visual art where three colors become four. I don't know if you're familiar with this Albers effect, but Richard Nelson has made a video of it that's extremely, uh, I don't know, powerful in, in its transmission of that. And then w musically there's the analogy to taking, as you know, a let's say, uh, a B-sharp, which has a certain meaning in a certain harm, in a harmonic field, continuing it and turning it into a C. So it's the same note on the piano, but if you surround it with different harmony, it changes its meaning. It's a little bit like a verbal homophone. So we're going to combine all of that and audience participation. <laughs> What do we all do? It? We I hand out it? bottles of tequila to the other. <laughs> I don't no. <laughs> we we will have the audience. This was came up the other day in rehearsal that that they will do the homophone. So mm -hmm. let's say uh, f to take whales. Let's say mm -hmm. so they will continuously say that sound, mm -hmm. but midway in an enactment, the meaning of that will change. 
So from Wales, you know, you could see in a, the performance artist cry. I'm, I'm gesturing on the radio, which doesn't make much sense, <laughs> but crying and you know, and, and sad, and and then midway turning into a whale, you know. And the point of it is, well, we'll see. <laughs> but it, it's also, it's you know, it's, it's George Orwell. I, I love his work. Of course, we know 1984, but he wrote an essay about language and politics, how when the words uh, are, the words should fi- search for a meaning. The, you know, the meaning shouldn't have to search for the words. It, it, when you get a situation where the, what's talked about on, you know, in discourse and normal discourse, let's say, in politics, Mm -hmm. becomes so meaningless as a result of the trite repeating of the same things, you know, that uh, the rhetoric that our politicians use, that over and over again, the same things, and it just sort of loses meaning. And we get into the area of what's now talked about as fake news, you know, what, what's real again, what, mm-hmm. what's the, the reality, what's the shadow of the, the real, uh, of the meaning, you know, so it, it's, uh, it, it gets into that area too, I think. Anyway, we go on. It's pretty <laughs> mind-expanding. Uh, yes, you know? I, I hope it, you know, it's very experimental, yes. let's face it, and, and uh, so, so sometimes we take, we have to go out on the limb and take a risk with these things. Um, you do often, and then we Almost have the, the three, three poems by Jim Loomis, who's mm-hmm. our um, public intellectual mathematician. Uh, wrote a book called Tales and Flukes from Life in the Trees, Fractal One, Saving the Cosmos Till Tuesday. Well, I guess we'll we'll be okay through today, but <laughs> 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 but uh, Jim has uh, we've taken three of his poems, and again Frank Kane will recite them. We'll have some video with them, and then we'll have um, music. Do you that, see how uh, you know. time flies when you lose touch with <laughs> <the> reality? <laughs> That's true. Well, you experienced um, that with the Tibetan Illusion Destroyer. Right. Yeah. right? Yeah. Well, so when's your film? Yeah. Your, your yeah, then, that, then, that, then comes, after that comes the films, I, I thought. We, and yeah. the, the order subject to change, but uh, then would be the um, uh, Awakenings and then Tom's film. I think I thought in a row. So this was taken at that that place you were at in in Nepal. Was this this footage that you took no, there? This or? was taken at Angkor Wat in Cambodia oh. and several other uh, temples that are unknown to the average tourist these days. That we, I had the privilege of visiting and even camping out at that with still all of the vegetation growing over it, and then again uh, another temple very close to Thailand. So different images of, of these uh, special places. And this would be in 3D? In 3D, right. With glasses? With glasses, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. yeah. And music um, is going to be done live or with recording? That will be recorded, yeah, okay. with Keola's music and also uh, Lou Harrison. I love Keola. He's yeah, just yeah. such an yeah. amazing guy. So, uh, I thought we would have the, maybe two films in a row. I mean, the idea of putting on and taking off the glasses, that's... Something that's okay, or is no, it, it would be fine to do it would, any way you want. Otherwise, they don't way. need to be right. Okay. Yeah. Well, just maybe the inconvenience. Then. But so to have two two films in a row, and then we do the Plato, the um, allegory of the cave in a stage composition. Mm-hmm. So that will be with music and shadow work mm-hmm. uh, and narration. Um, and finally, we'll fi- uh, we'll do Gary Greenberg's film, the Floratica, in uh, back to the three D. In other words, so it's an amazing so lineup. This would be like a forty dollar concert event. <laughs> it really would. I can't believe you're doing it for free, yeah, Robert. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, well, we I really we am do shocked a th- that you're thank, doing it for thank, free. Thanks to the Hawaii State Foundation on Culture and Arts. You know they've been uh, stalwart re- supporters of Evan Flow Arts as as many other nonprofit arts organizations but it's not a matter of you know we'll start you up and then you know you're on your own in the free market economy kind of attitude it's that they just stay with groups over the years now it may not be huge amounts because they've been whittled down they mm-hmm. used to the state foundation on culture and arts here used to be one of the strongest 
in the country. I didn't know that. Yeah, oh. per capita. Mm-hmm. But right now, um, it's it's doing okay. You know, it's actually uh, we've we've noticed in- increases now over the last uh, two or three cycles from them. So they've well, uh, you're very very good at knowing how to approach them. And I, I, of all the people I know who do events, you're the best at knowing how to approach them and apply for the grants. And and uh, you do that's one of your wonderful gifts. You know that and the talent that you put together for free. Um, but but. This is not a huge venue, no, so people no. should. Think, yeah. are you, what are you going to do? Do uh, people so get we tickets? Can, we can have uh, if people want to call in to eight seven six one eight five four, or uh, connect with us through our website uh, ebbenflowarts dot org to make reservations. We will we will gladly do that. Mm-hmm. Um, best is to show up pretty Since early. People are driving in the car and they can't remember it. You just say it once. Yes, let's yeah, repeat so, that. So it's a eight zero eight. Eight seven six one eight five four and triple w dot eb and flow arts dot o r g. So will, if you just show up, you don't know if you'll get a ticket, right? You may not be able to get in if you yeah, just show up. Yeah. Well, again, we'll it, you know it's a calculated uh, uh, situation in which we know that this is the first time we've been at this venue uh-huh. that we don't have uh, that that. Um, Often our venues are up country or yeah. central Maui, so the Kihei larger. is a, li- a, l- a little bit more unusual. So we're we're taking the the um, um, this path w- in order to be able to do such a production. I mean, this is a facility that's prepared for it. It has mm-hmm. a, the light fixtures, has an excellent manager, has a good PA system. Uh, and it's, it's just they're very Christy Scott again, the manager. It's very accommodating, so she's quite helpful. Well, to I do want to that. mention you take donations, and we do take donations. Absolutely, mm-hmm. we have a, a bowl because these so are, these events you get people in it. They're expensive to put these things on. Yeah, there's a lot no, of time. No, we do working. pay our. We absolutely pay our artists and our uh, musicians, and uh, always. Mm-hmm. I, I, I wouldn't want to do this kind of work if we couldn't manage that. But it's also the case that we're, we, we, we do receive this public funding mm-hmm. and private foundation funding. But uh, Well, this, thank God for that. Because yeah, I just, yeah. you've created a little niche that no one else has really even well, approached. I, 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 I'm, you know, I'm excited to, again, work with these people. They're so so uh, it's a cohesive group. It's, we hadn't been really worked together for four years or so. But we had a rehearsal not long ago, and it just felt like, you know, yesterday that we had convened and, and put things together, and it was a, a good creative session. So we Well, it's we're, fascinating we're to about, listen to, but, yeah. you know, just all it does is give me clues about how amazing it will be to be there. Um, because yeah, it, it's, it, it's a multimedia because it's oh, a yeah. lot visual. There's I a lot of visual sure. happening. There's, a, of course, narration uh, and, and poetry reading, and, and so there's... A variety of um, art forms on display, and then you have your visual artists. And you created this piece and, for this event, Tom. And three D yes. film, yes. Wow. Yeah. So we're honored that that Tom is is uh, working with us again, you know, and lending his resources. I think it's fantastic. A, yeah. You're going to go back to? I heard you can take another trip up to the mountains. The mountains yes, I'm, uh, again? in May. I'm heading to Mount Kailash. Oh, wow. And. Uh, it's considered the most sacred mountain to uh, four different religions. And Georgiana Cook and Lama oh, Geltsin and, and the Dharma Center were mm-hmm. the. I had to cap the uh, number of people yeah. at 22. I originally had 10. <laughs> but, huh. but anyway, we're very excited about it. And yeah, this is a walk around the entire mountain? Yeah, it's yeah. a 30 mile trek up to 18,600 feet. I wanted to go, but I just really couldn't deal with that altitude thing. Yeah, it's, it's tough. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But it's it's always nice because you come back with great footage and great stories. Great stories. Great and, stories. And, and also the, uh, just being in that environment, it's very inspiring and spiritual for me. Oh, that's yeah. Where I, and May is the spiritual time of year there. That's when Sagadawa takes yeah. place, when they raise the flagpole with all of the, you know, the Tibetan flags on it and... Uh, it's fascinating to watch that in the middle of nowhere. This huge uh, 20-foot pole goes up, you know, and if, if it gets erected straight, that means we're in for a good year. If it falls, who oh. knows? Oh. <laughs> well, that's kind of also called the Wiesek Festival, the 
mm-hmm. full moon of May is a very, very spiritual time. So right. there's a lot of energy around it. So I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing stories about that. But uh, Hopefully I, you'll get to see some of it, I too. would like to. <laughs> well, I just love the people involved in this, Robert. Mm-hmm. It's wonderful. I just love it. Thank you for doing all this great work. People can go to ebbandflowarts.org where yes. they can call. 876-1854. 876-1854. 876-1854. I want to wish everyone a very, very happy New Year. And I feel very blessed happy to have New wonderful year. people like you mm-hmm. doing the work that you're doing, which is always a gift to the community. It's really it's quite fantastic. So thank you Thanks. for coming thank in. Thank you. Hey, happy, happy New um, Year and happy get New better. Year. Thank you. I, will, I certainly will try. And thank you for listening. Aloha.